Harold Frederick Shipman was an English doctor and one of the most prolific serial killers in modern history, responsible for killing hundreds of his patients by administering lethal injections in order to kill them for financial gain, as he would forge their wills and be able to claim their assets. On January 31, 2000, after serving 15 life sentences, he was found hanging in his cell at HM Prison Wakefield, where he had been incarcerated since his conviction in 2000. He died the following day aged 58 from the effects of hanging. In this video, we'll cover what led up to the murders, how everything happened, and also a little bonus at the end so stay tuned to find out. Also, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. Shipman was born on January 14, 1946, in the small town of Hyde near Manchester. He went to a grammar school and had an interest in science, but he dropped out at the age of 15. He completed his schooling by correspondence and enrolled at the University of Leeds to study biochemistry. It was there that he met his future wife, Primrose West, with whom he had two children. Shipman then graduated from Leeds University with a degree in medicine and took up a post as a general practitioner in Pontefract soon afterward. In 1974, after just five years of practice as a general practitioner, Shipman became a registrar working for Dr. Gordon Davis at Doncaster Royal Infirmary. Not long after, it's thought that Harold began his killing spree in the late 1970s. His murder victims were usually elderly women most of the time who died of what was called unexplained causes. But little did they know, it was actually Harold Shipman killing the patients so it was far from an unexplained cause of death. He often forged his victims' signatures on blank checks and stole money from their bank accounts as well and this would be the beginning of the paper trail that would eventually get him caught. But despite that, it's difficult to put an exact figure on how many people he killed. Although he was only convicted on 15 counts of murder, it's estimated that it could be as high as 250 people over a span of more than 20 years. If true, this would turn him into one of the most prolific serial killers in modern-day history. His first victim was Johnny Lee, who he killed with an injection of diamorphine in 1975. It was almost as if that were just a test run though since he waited nearly two years before killing another patient. He murdered his second victim, George Oldfield, in 1977 and would then go on to kill 15 more people before he was finally caught for Oldfield's murder. The murder of George Oldfield and the paper trail he left behind were the two main things that would later lead Shipman to get caught. But there was something interesting about the way he actually selected his victims. It's said that he would go through his list of patients, looking for the ones who were due to die within the next few days, and when he found one, he would then inject them with the drug of his choice. Once they were drugged, he would then forge their will so that he had access to their assets when they died. He would also suggest they change their will while they were alive which made it even more difficult for other family members to contest it when they died. He carried out this killing spree over several decades without anyone suspecting a thing. And although he would later get caught, Shipman was able to get away with murder for so long due to a lack of computerized record keeping. He would forge and alter death certificates in addition to the other documents that we just spoke about, which made it difficult for anyone to know the true number of people he killed. A nurse, who worked alongside him, noticed that there were discrepancies in his patient's records when she looked at the charts. She reported her suspicions but nothing ever came of it. Shipman was also able to avoid suspicion by forging signatures on cremation forms and prescription pads. If there was a way to forge it, he would do it. He stopped at nothing. And that's ultimately the reason why he was able to get away with it for decades and amass a total of around 250 possible victims. The police found out about the murders when they were investigating the deaths of two of Harold's patients. They found that both of them had been killed by an overdose of a drug called diamorphine, which was only given to people who had legitimate prescriptions. In this instance, neither of the patients should have actually been receiving any of that medication at all, let alone enough to cause an overdose. With this information, the police then obtained a search warrant for his home. They discovered that he had been forging hundreds and hundreds of different signatures on dozens of different prescription forms. Shipman was given a life sentence with a whole life order. 
he had originally faced 15 counts of murder and one count of attempted murder but was convicted on all counts. It's likely that he killed more than 250 people, although this cannot actually be proven in a court of law since there were so many victims that it would make it impossible to re-evaluate the manner of death of every single one of his patients he ever had. But with all that in mind, his crimes were uncovered when police investigated the death of 60-year-old Kathleen Grundy in 1998, she had been his patient for 14 years. That's when they found that between 1975 and 1998, he killed at least 15 different patients by injecting them with high doses of morphine. This was when he was officially deemed a serial killer. But just a few years after he was incarcerated, Harold Shipman hanged himself in his cell at HM Prison Wakefield in West Yorkshire on January 13, 2004. This was the day before his 58th birthday. But he wasn't quite dead when he was found hanging. They took him to the prison hospital to treat him and this is where he died the next day. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Also, let us know what you think about Harold Shipman's case down in the comments below.